welcome to the year 2024 and i hope that you have a great year and hopefully you all can get to achieve your goals of becoming a professional pilot or at least getting to start your training and being on your way so uh, let's talk about tui it's going to be a little bit uh, packed so i'm hoping to be able to speed up this information so that i don't bore you as most of you don't even stay to the end of the video i would appreciate if you stay to the end of this one it helps and it goes a long way most importantly please don't forget to drop that like on that video it's free if you haven't subscribed yet don't forget to subscribe it also goes a long way but please dropping those likes is a way you guys let me know that this is something that you would like to see or some content like this that is you know packed with information and details and i hope that you find value in it most importantly you get to achieve your goal that is my own hope and dream for you and that's why i do what i do at the end of the day um, so let's start with the important part 2023 TUI ran this program, okay, and um, I have my computer to my left here, which I'll show the screen. Um, TUI ran the same scheme, and they had about 6,700 applicants or applications were submitted. 2,000 uh, interviews were done, or 2,000 interviews were done, and out of those, they were able to screen them down to about 30. Now, we are going to talk about the application stages, which I've covered in different videos, but again, I try to gather new things, bring new information to you so that you can be better prepared. Like we know, or as you may not know, the date was changed from 4th to 8th. So now we have six more days uh, to actually prepare for this opportunity. Well, hopefully you're already prepared, but we are trying to cross our T's and dot the I's at this point. So for 2024, which is going to open, like I said, it's going to open on January 8th. It's going to close on the 31st. One important thing to say about that is this last scheme that they ran uh, they actually closed the application early they, of course there's always some technical issues because the systems can often get uh, bombarded with applications and a lot of traffic and that could also, could also be a problem so that's something we can think of you know how do you mitigate that it's not really under our control but try to do your best do your applications do them when you're ready and complete them in time uh, some of the keywords that TUI actually has on their website and they stated that they are looking for people that are committed, that are resilient, that are hardworking, people that have great communication skills, great leadership skills, people that remain under, remain calm under pressure, and they have strong motivation to learn. Now, all of this, are, you know, you think it's common sense, but trust me, you need to be able to also demonstrate this, put this on your CV, I mean, in some way or the other, don't forget the pilot competencies, which I will talk on, on your CV. In your answers and your questionnaire, find ways to also demonstrate that you have these skills or these traits. In during your interviews, if you make it to the interview stage or video assessment, make sure you find ways to put in this in your answers. It's all tying it together to show that you're a well-rounded individual that can be a great candidate or a great pilot for TUI. Now, one question that I think I've asked, someone has asked is how many candidates are they actually taking on? We, this is something that I believe, you know, we don't know that specific answer just yet. But from what I've been able to gather and from what TUI actually stated on their website, they are going to be taking on 30 candidates every year through this program. So my guess is that this is also going to be 30 candidates. Not sure. I don't like spreading rumors, but I'm just sharing what I've been able to find. This is from their website. Now, so when not from the application website by the way it's just from their news page now so how, how do we uh put all this together all right the first stage is the assessment right the assessment process the first stage is the stage one where you have to do your um online application and submit your cv i've covered cvs i've talked about that there's so many areas of cvs that we can get into but the bottom line is try to represent honestly who you are okay and put down like i said those keywords that i mentioned at the, at, the, at the beginning of this try to find ways to tie them into your cv and also don't forget to include those pilot competencies i just want to make sure this is the okay uh don't forget to include those pilot competencies okay you can go to google search for pilot competencies and try to find ways to put them on your CV, relating them to your experiences in the past, to what you do, to your education, to just your hobbies and interests, find ways to be able to put them in there. Now, I wouldn't go over, I've covered this stage process, but let's talk about maybe a little bit more in depth on each stage. Okay, so 
for stage one, like I mentioned, it's application and CV. The application criteria, okay, this is so important. When you go to the website, TDS website, they already list the criteria of what they're looking for, eligibility requirements and stuff like that. Go ahead and look into it. Most importantly, go to the FAQ section of that website and read through each section of it to make sure that you have all the things that you need to actually qualify. You don't want to waste your time and you don't want to submit an application that is just going to flop, right? So go ahead and do that part now. Please take your time, do that part. The next thing I was, like I was covering earlier is the CV. The CV is something that I've covered so many times. You can go ahead and check some of my previous videos on this. I won't cover it again in this. But most importantly, few points, okay? Check for errors. Make sure that uh, your spellings are right. Use a word processor to check for errors and just, um, you know, your, your, your statement that you made there. Make sure there are no errors, there are no um, punctuations in the right place. Proper fonts and readable fonts. Please don't use, don't use fancy fonts that would make it difficult for you to read or make it difficult for someone else to read. Preferably, you should use between 12 to 14 points on your font size and for the headers or subheading uh, sections you can let those can be between 14 to 16 to show you know just that there are subheadings or headings uh, but the text itself should not be more than you know 12 somewhere 12 is actually a saves number 14 is getting a little bit too big but you know it still works depending on what format or what font type you use stick to the basics Arial's, time renew romance those ones are the basic Georgia Sun. Uh, I can't remember the name, but anyway, Georgia, I think it's Georgia Sun something. I can't remember the point, but stick to the basic fonts that are professional, that are neat, that has no uh, excessive um, or distracting type things on it. All right, organization of your CV is also important. Now, I, was, I would show you some templates here, okay? The reason why I'm showing you this is that uh, let me see if I can find it here. Ba, ba, ba. All right. When you're choosing a template for your CV, you can make yours, you can make one yourself. Feel free to do that. But when you're choosing, choose something that helps you maximize real estate on your white paper or help you maximize space. In this case, a CV like this one, okay, depending on what you're applying for. In this case, you're applying for a, a career program. You don't need anything fancy, okay? Pref preference. This is my preference. I would always stick to something that is simple, like this types here. I, I hope you guys can see this properly, but I hope, let me just zoom in so that you guys can see that. Uh, all right, I'll, I would prefer CVs that look simple. I can use my real estate pretty well. CVs like this, because you have one section here, you have another section here, can sometimes make it difficult for you to type out you don't want excessive words, but you also don't want your CV to look empty, right? So, yes, it has to be a balance. But I don't always like using CVs that would give me, make it difficult for me to write. This type of CVs are good for listing things on the left side. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad. For listing words and, and maybe skills like this person did here on the left side. And then on the right side, you have details of your experiences, where you can write a little bit more of what you did, which I'm gonna cover shortly. So think about the CV, think about your experience, and do you have enough information to fill in white spaces? If you do, right, please use a CV that lets you express yourself. If you do not have a lot of experience, and maybe all you have is just education and a few um, volunteering activities or if you just you know light experience because you're still young and you're just getting out of school maybe you can use something like this and get away with it because you are not going to be crammed with a lot of information and as you can see one important thing these are all one page CVs so if you think you have a lot of things to say use a CV or use a format or a style that lets you express yourself if you don't have a lot of things to say Use a CV that helps you list things, but at the same time, you are able to maximize the space that you have. There is no point right using a CV like this when you have a lot of things to say on your CV that are important, by the way, and then you end up using two pages because the problem is that you end up limiting yourself to a tiny space, like in this case, the right side. You've limited yourself to it, so then you end up going to the second page 
But now what's going to happen on the second page is that you have nothing to put on the left side. So you are going to, you're going to have a lot of white space on the left side when you could have just used a CV that lets you maximize space and you can use one page. Okay. They always say sometimes less is more. Think about it. Anything you're putting on your CV, make sure it's something that is relevant to the role. If it's not relevant to the role, remove it. It's just going to be a bunch of words on the CV that is not relevant to the role. I don't want to talk too much about CV. This is not really going to be about CV, so let me get back to what we were talking about. Um, but this is just something important because I've seen a lot of CVs and I always try to, you know, keep this at the top of my uh, uh, the recommendations to people that are applying for these programs. Uh, excess, avoid excessive use of words, like I already mentioned. No pictures, all right? You're not applying to be uh, uh, managing... Uh, wrong word. You're not applying to a, a creative director role or something like that, or a creative assistant role where they might want to see your picture and how creative you are or something like that. This is a professional role. You don't need to put pictures on your CV. Nobody cares about what you look like, honestly. They will see you on your video assessment. They will see you on interviews. They don't need your pictures. The next important thing is how do you tie your experiences or bring out your experiences from the past and tie it with the pilot competency? This is where you need to do your own soul searching. This is an important area because uh, I use this acronym, PETER, all right? P stands for pilot competencies and the T-A-R, the T stands for task, the A stands for the actions that we're taking or think about action words and then the R stands for results. So. If you were working in a team or working in, a, in an organization in which your task was or your role was that you were given a position of a store manager, for example, all right? Now, that is your role. So the task where maybe you needed to uh, engage with the teammates and, and, and set up the store or get to achieve a certain milestone uh, for the store, right, or at the store, in that case, you need to find, say what you did, state the, the, the actions that you took, and state the results you got. So the tasks that you were given, the actions you took, and the results you achieved, if possible. This just makes your CV much more um, effective, okay, in writing it. And the thing about action words to help you, but don't make, don't write too long statements. It makes it hard to, uh, to read, and it makes your CV very long. You don't want that. Objective is something that I would recommend that you also have on your CV right after your name and your contact information. You should have an objective, something that tells them in three. By the way, how, long, how many words do you think your objective should be? The consensus out there from all these organizations that review CV is nothing more than 50 words, 30 to 50 words. And uh, anything more than that is becoming excessive. And 50 words is actually, you know, quite a lot because you don't have a lot of space as well. So. Three, three sentences, three to four sentences might be enough to just talk about your objective, okay? If you can write it pretty well, or no more than 50 words anyway, that is enough for your objective. Um, and like I mentioned already, it shouldn't be more than one page. Now, for the stage two, all right, this is where you talk about your, of course, your questionnaire and online assessment. Your questionnaire is going to be something to either test your comprehension skills and your writing skills. So. Again, I don't have an idea of what exactly you would get, but whatever you get, just remember, check for errors, take your time to write it. it would, I believe you, you'd have you know, a set time or a set duration to finish this. So try to stick with the timelines that are there, that are stated. Don't waste time and don't, um, don't delay finishing it. Uh, for the online assessment, you would have the verbal, numerical, logical reasoning, and then uh, I just want to show you the website that they have on there where you can practice. So if you go to the TUI page and then you scroll all the way to the bottom and uh, you can click the, you see where it says, are there any practice tests that I can do? You can click that and it brings you to this website, which after you log in, you would have a page like this where you can practice these tests, this assessment. And, uh, you know, you can do it because these are the three you would actually do verbal, numerical, and logical reasoning. These are things that you can do. And, you know, play around with the other ones as well, video interviews, situation judgment tests, or questions. Play around with it. Be familiar with it. This is an opportunity, so I would be as prepared as possible. Um, for the 
pass. I have pass here, but I'm going to cover that shortly. The reason why this is important is for other things. Uh, but let's move on to the next one here. For the uh, digital interview, stage three, you have your, you have five days to complete it. You have to, you know, they'll ask questions, series of questions, and then you record your answers. Stick to the timelines, make sure that you're well-dressed, all that. But actually, I do have that. But it take, I do have something for that. I will get to it. But you would hear back, if you make it through, if you do all this, you would hear back by the uh, 18th of March, 2024. Now, well, something I want to say is this, right? From your stage one to your stage three, apparently it's likely going to be something you do all at once, okay? So it's not like you submit stage one and then you come back and they'll tell you if you make it stage two, and then, you know, you go do the stage two and then you uh, hear back if you make it to stage three. Apparently you would have to do all of this together. For your digital interview, these are some recommendations. Stick to the time. Don't try to impress by stating too much that you run out of time. Find quiet areas with no distractions. Make sure that your audio and visuals are good. All right. Uh, dress like you're attending an in-person interview. Don't wear a tie. You know, you, may not, you don't have to necessarily wear a suit, but I, again, I will go above and beyond and make sure that I, I am showing up like uh, it's an in-person interview. So I'll leave that to you, but personally, I would wear a suit, okay? I know that it might be overkill, but that's what I would do. Um, your camera should be well positioned. Of course, you don't want to be, you don't want your camera to look like that or, you know, you're way above the, the, the view. So stay within the frame of the pictures and, you know, position it right. Uh, personality is important. So, you know, be relaxed and understand that this, the other person on the other side is a human being, just like you guys are watching this video. I hope that you get to put that to use, all right? Let them see your personality. They want to see that you're a person that is likable, someone that is approachable, somebody that is uh, confident, right? You can speak well, all that they want to see. So try to put that to use. And it might take some practice. That's something I would recommend that maybe you do. Record yourself talking, give yourself random questions and practice. You, I mean, I hope you've been practicing already, especially for those of you that have gone through the British Airways program in, uh, you know, in the last year. You guys that have made it through the video inter assessment and made it through the, the, the uh, in-person assessments as well, maybe even got to the final stage, you guys already got some practice on going through these interviews. So put it, let it show through that you have some confidence, all right, in yourself. Practice for the online assessment and don't be, don't be in a rush to start until you're ready. Uh, stage four and stage five, this are just, you know, this is where you're going to the uh, assessments, locations, and then you actually do some exercises and some interviews. And then stage five is where you do some flying aptitude assessments in a simulator 737. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about pass. The reason why I'm bringing pass is this. So for the stage three, where you do the, um, where you do the logical reasoning, verbal reasoning, and numerical reasoning test, where the website that they are, that I showed you on there is good, but you have other assessments that you do for the interviews, right? If the stage four and stage five, this is where pass becomes really important. And uh, the package here that they have is, you know, you can use this to prepare for the TUI Belgium, TUI Airways UK, and TUI Nordic, which is one, TUI UK is the one you guys are going for anyway right now. And as you can see, TUI Belgium as what well is going to open up this month. So this is also applicable, but you have the reasoning Tests, you have some mental math, planning exercise, role play exercise, personality test, psychology interview or psychological interview, the HR interview, simulator assessment. So you have a lot of information, much more information with pass in here. And I'm just trying to share that with you. And as you can see, this is the reasoning test. You have some exercises here that you can do. You have the mental math, you know, that you can practice. You have the planning exercise where you do a lot of group activities or I believe it's some group activities. Um, of course, none of this, none of this is uh, 100 percent. It might change. That's what I'm trying to say. This might change. So, but it gives an idea of what you can expect. Uh, role play exercises, uh, personality tests, psychological interview. Then there's some HR interview questions that you can practice for. Simulator assessment, and then you have the 737 test. Now, I don't think this is important, but it's good to know, right? It, you wouldn't be tested on this because you're not going to fly, but in some extra information, some ATP or refresher course, I don't think this would be necessary as well, especially for your cadet stage, but you would have access to all of this stuff. Um, 
and you can subscribe you know you can do the three months you can do the uh, professional pass there's so many packages out there that you're on here rather that you can use i wanted to share this with you guys i wanted to make sure that you guys have all the information that you need for success again these are all just recommendations do your part the video is getting too long i just wanted to say thank you for watching if you stayed up until this point i hope that you have found value in this one and i wish you best of luck and uh, i'll see you in the next one